Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Briar Hengdahl Windwalker. I used to be very good at sitting Zazen. Which isn't to say I'm an exceptional student or practitioner, just that if you do something long enough, you kind of get good at it and I've done it for a while and I found that I could jam myself into a posture and sit for a very long time but a number of years ago I, I started having some problems with my back and the first way they really represented difficulties in my sitting was I would find that after 40 minutes of seated meditation, we would rise to do walking meditation and my legs wouldn't want to work. So I'd kind of get up from the cushion and stagger around a little bit till I got my feet under me and look decidedly ungraceful in line with everybody. About two and a half years ago, I went in for surgery and they rebuilt my back and so I'm I'm now the uh, the bionic priest and i remember being in the hospital and one of the first things i did is reach for my mala and try to meditate and of course i was laying in a hospital bed and if anybody has tried to meditate in a hospital that's really an experience uh, uh, of its own there's there's things dinging and beeping and ringing and alarms and none of them in any particular sequence probably some yelling and crying probably a, a siren outside the window but there's also your your physical condition which if you've had anything major done kind of varies between a, a great deal of pain or a great deal of sedation. And so you find yourself trying to meditate and either gritting your teeth through the pain or trying not to fall asleep with the, with the uh, medication running in through the IV. And if by chance you do manage to find a focused, calm, mindful state, that's exactly the moment at which a nurse will come in and need to give you something or take something from you. But I made it through the hospital and out of the hospital and, and through some rehab. And one of the things that I had tried to do was, was to go back and sit. And I have found a, a great deal of difficulty in my posture. My back doesn't sit quite where it seems like it should. And I can't cross my legs and quite the right way and in taking the pressure off some nerves they apparently allowed me to experience some some greater levels of pain in my legs than I was previously experiencing so I've had to make a number of adjustments to how I sit to how I hold myself I'm still working on those adjustments I work on them every day to how long I'm able to sit, what my posture is. And through this experience, I found also just how attached, for lack of a better term, I was to the posture itself. I found that my ability to settle myself and concentrate was dependent more than I might have supposed it would be to maintaining that posture. And when I struggle with my posture, I struggle with my concentration. But I keep working on it. If anything, in some ways harder than others. So why? And I've thought about that a great deal as I've worked on it. I'm sure everybody has heard some variation of this story. It's, it's very popular, you know, extreme cool Dharma dude is sitting there in intense meditation, chicken taza, just, just sitting hour after hour, all day, every day. 
And eventually, you know, old wizened Dharma dude comes wandering by and looks at this guy who's just sitting there and he bangs his staff on the ground and he yells, hey, hippie, why are you sitting there like that? And the young guy says, well, I'm practicing sitting to meditate because I'm going to become a Buddha. And the old dude says, huh, okay. Young man closes his eyes, goes back to sitting. The old man sits down and he picks up a brick and he starts grinding it really loudly on the gravel on the ground there. After a couple minutes of this, the, the young dude, he kind of cracks an eye open and he looks at him. Gives him a little bit of a scowl, thinks maybe that'll make him stop. It doesn't. He just grinds that brick even louder. He finally opens his eyes and he says, hey, Pop, what, what are you doing? And the master says, well, I'm, I'm polishing this brick to turn it into a mirror. And the meditator says, well, that makes no sense. You can't polish a, a brick into a mirror. And the master says, well, you can't meditate yourself into a Buddha. Now, many times the story stops there, but I, actually, I, I believe the full version goes on a little bit. The, the young meditator says, well, then explain this. And the master says, if the cart is not moving, do you whip the cart or whip the ox? And of course, at this point, because that's the way these stories go, the young man obtains Satori and everything's good and, you know, flower petals fall from the heavens. And we won't even get into a himza and why we're always whipping oxen in these stories, but this has been taken, this story, and a lot of times to say that meditation is, is in some way not important. And it's certainly not the whole point. It's not the whole picture. It goes with the teachings and the sutras and the sangha. It goes with the practice and the devotion. But it's not to say that sitting is not important, that meditation is not important. And there's a common stream that runs through the experience of Buddha, and Bodhidharma, Dogen, Lin Chi, through, through the masters of generations upon generations, which is something like this in some variant or other. There is a mountain over there. And the view from the top of that mountain is incredible. It's magnificent. Which is not to say it's always beautiful. Sometimes the view lets you see war, or a storm, or a famine. Sometimes the view lets you see beauty in the sunrise and the moonrise. Sometimes it's just clarity and sometimes it's a fog, but the view from that mountain, that's incredible. But you have to get up there. You have to make that journey. And the different schools have different ways of making that journey. You, you might have a path that somebody has blazed for you. Or you might have trail markers or you might have a map. They might give you a machete and tell you to cut through the briars and thorns. Or a shovel and dig your path on the way up. And maybe once that path is cleared and blazed, there's a rainstorm and it washes away in a mudslide and you start over. But if you want to see from the top of the mountain, you have to get there. If you want to have that view. And ultimately, the mountain is you and the view is your mind. And if your aim is to have the view you work on climbing that mountain day after day. You work on sitting, on meditation, standing, walking, laying, doing dishes, 
you meditate because that's what our school teaches us. That's what the Buddha taught us. That's what the Buddha did when he experienced enlightenment. And so we practice and we chant and we talk and we teach and we learn and we guide each other and we follow the ancestors. And yes, we find our best way to sit down and find a posture and to check out the view. <laughs>